Last week, I had a lot of fun with the people under the stairs. And it got me gushing about Wes Craven. Now, I love Wes Craven. I love, 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 love his more obscure stuff. Well, that was before I dusted off my copy of Shocker. This movie is not how I remember it. I remember liking it. Shocker is about a crazed killer who harnesses the power of electricity, which gives him the ability to possess other people's bodies. What's not to love? This is one of the most underrated and underused horror tropes where the killer can actually possess other people's bodies. The Hidden did this, so did Friday the 13th. Jason Goes to Hell, which is easily the worst Friday the 13th movie ever, is actually pretty good for one reason. And that's the fact Jason can go from body to body. The problem with Shocker is the body swapping, which should have been the main course, is only a tiny portion of the movie. The first third of this movie is just about the cops trying to track down the killer. The killer's name, by the way, is Pinker. Now, when I think of the names of the most iconic killers in horror movies, my mind goes right to Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, Norman Bates, Jack Torrance, even Charles Lee Ray. These names, they work. Is it because the names are evil sounding to begin with? Or do we just associate their names with evil because of the movies? I don't know, maybe it's a little bit of both. Either way, Pinker does not stand a chance. Wes Craven, you could have done so much better than that. I know because you already did. Anyway, this poorly named killer is finally tracked down, but not by the police. He's tracked down by a college football jock who happens to have a psychic connection with Pinker. No joke, this college dude, Jonathan, is able to see where Pinker is in his dreams. I didn't see that one coming. A, a Wes Craven movie about dreams. And these dream sequences are weird. Jonathan can see Pinker wherever he is, but Pinker can also see him. And, and so can the victims. So do the victims have a psychic connection with Jonathan too? I don't know. So Jonathan works with the cops to track down Pinker. Only the first time they track him down, Pinker gets away. <laughs> to pay him back for almost getting caught, Pinker kills Jonathan's girlfriend. Which on one hand is pretty ballsy, but at the same time, it sucks because now we have to go through the whole beginning of the movie all over again. Jonathan has another weird dream where he sees Pinker and he works with the cops all over again to track him down. It's like they had two places where they wanted to film the capture scene, but they couldn't decide between the two, so they just wrote a script to include both. Anyway, with Pinker finally in custody, they sentence him to death, like the following week, because we all know how fast the judicial system works. This is where the movie finally picks up, for a little bit. Pinker gets executed, only instead of dying, he turns into pure energy and he's able to possess other people. Let the body swapping begin. This is what I've been waiting for, for 40 minutes. I had to sit through 40 minutes of the most boring and repetitive plot just to get to this point, which lasts for about 15 minutes. He possesses a doctor to get out of prison. <laughs> then he possesses all sorts of people chasing Jonathan, a cop, get down on the ground now! a construction worker, Eat your heart out, sucker. even this little girl, Why couldn't this be the entire movie? Going from body to body, chasing after Mr. Football Star. No, instead the movie forgets that he even has this power and they go back to focus on Jonathan's dreams because we were having so much fun the first time. He dreams about his dead girlfriend who somehow now has a special power to fight against Pinker. Go back to hell where you belong, Pinker. What the fuck is going on? To make things even more confusing, Jonathan chases Pinker into a TV where they run around through all the channels. Oh. 
What is it, movie? Can Pinker go inside of other people's bodies or into the TV? And why can Jonathan suddenly join the party with these powers? Anyway, Jonathan escapes just as the power goes out, trapping Pinker in the TV and destroying him forever. I don't remember any of this. If you were to ask me just one week ago, what was Shocker about? I could have answered it easily. It's about a body swapping killer. But today, I, I can't answer that. I have no idea what this movie's about. I feel like Wes Craven had a bunch of crazy ideas for a movie, but he couldn't figure out how to piece them all together. So he just threw in some leftover ideas from Nightmare on Elm Street and called it done. This movie's especially disappointing coming after the people under the stairs. That was such a fun horror movie. It had such great visuals and fun characters. It even dealt with some pretty serious issues about race and class. But Shocker? I have no idea what this movie's trying to say. If you want to watch this movie, which I'm sure you do, just skip to the 40 minute mark and watch it until you get to the best scene in the movie. You'll know when you get to it. Thanks for watching guys, my name's Kenny, and until next time, let's not just watch movies, let's talk about them too.